one two one two one two one two two. Jolly good. There we go. Uh, let's see you out. Thanks for watching at Super 8 Rescue. Thanks for watching at Super 8 Rescue. Super 8 Rescue by Super 8 Rescue. Can we do take four on that, please, love? It wasn't very good. Not butch enough. In today's video, you're going to see me taking apart a Fostex R8 uh, 8-track multi-track tape machine. And initially, during the filming, it was looking much better uh, than I'd initially thought it was going to be. I thought we were in for a proper old repair job with cracked pulley wheels and what have you and it turned out there are a few loose bits that need looking at but uh, it's not nearly as bad as I thought and when we had it open on the bench uh, and it was playing and fast forwarding and rewinding all appeared to be perfect uh, but it's quite clear to see that once I plug it in speed is an issue and that is without doubt down to the white pulley wheel that drives the capstan because that's what determines the speed of the tape running through the machine. So the plan is at Christmas, when I've got a bit more time, we're going to take it home where I've got a, a much better bench to work on. And we can light it up and we'll have a look at it. We'll go in the back door and we'll whip off that capstan pulley and we'll give it a good clean. And uh, we'll see what we can do with some baking powder and some Gorilla Glue or even some super glue, just to make sure that that white pulley is not slipping uh, on, its, uh, on its little motor shaft. Uh, without doubt that's what's making it run slow and of course the other problem is the muffled sound and you'll hear me saying in the video that these things record amazing quality well yeah back in the 90s when tape was fresh it was a whole different case but the minute you run a tape past the heads on these things now uh, it's going to shed more oxide than a as a, a mucky labrador just coming in from a woody wet walk so uh, that's another point that to, to consider when you're listening to what's coming off of the tape later on all right, let's get into the video, and I hope you enjoy as much as I enjoyed uh, making it. It's an absolute thrill to uh, lace up a tape machine, which I haven't done for a jolly long time. Welcome, welcome, welcome along, and uh, look what we've got for us today. Gosh, this is just the most wonderful machine, and uh, we've got some repairs to do on it. It's the Fostex R8 multi-track tape recorder. Uh, from the uh, from the early mid 90s something like this uh, and this was my absolute studio workhorse for many many years and before this I had the uh, the model 80 and it's well known that these things have a real problem uh, all these years later with plastic that's dried and cracked on the uh, the two capstan motors I think it is or the one capstan motor and the pulley drives um, so we're going to switch it on, but I know for a fact it's, it's not going to play. Um, we'll try and get the cover off it and have a look and see what the damage is ready for repairs. Uh, we're going to be using a website called mzentertainment.com and I will put a link for that down below in the description that gives you absolute step-by-step -step, um, step -step instructions on uh, how to make it better if that's one way of putting it so we'll take these two tape things off we've got a reel of tape what's the date on this 1993 goodness me uh, Paul Weller songs uh, Sanctus P.A. Yezu Desiree Fostex R8 Dolby C 15 inches a second so let's thread this up uh, gosh it's been a few years since I threaded one of these up goodness me what a treat there we go. So we've got some power on it. Um, we've got the remote control on the front which is detachable. Uh, somewhere I've got the 50 foot extension lead because we had this in a different room to the actual uh, studio room so we didn't have the noise of the, the reels and all that sort of stuff. So let's power him up and he'll do his little self test. But if we hit play I don't think we're going to get anything at all. Let's see, shall we? Oh, goodness me, look at that. It does work. I think we're going to have a problem with rewind, though. Uh, as I say, I haven't got it hooked at the outputs hooked up to anything at the moment. Um, we'll let that play in a few seconds. I was convinced this wouldn't work, so I'm totally surprised I've got anything out of it. Um, we can see something hearing here maybe I should hook it up then we should pop it on the mixer uh, let's see if it'll rewind 
Now, there we go. So we've got no rewind. Oh, we've got fast forward, but I don't want to fast forward to. We're going to have to do a, a rewind cheat by doing it manually, but uh, we can manage that, I'm quite sure. Get this back to the beginning, get the tape off. That's why I didn't want to go too far into it. So let's get that reel of tape off. There we go. Plenty of leader on it. Oh, I used to love splicing leader on these things. And uh, let's get that back in its box. Dear old Fostex. So the website we're looking at is mzentertainment.com. And here you can see it lists the main features here. Uh, we'll take you to a screen capture of this. But this is the bit you want. It's all the repair information. Um, and when you first click on this, it might look as though the website's not working properly. But if you then click on the pictures, you'll see that it opens up. We're on the bench. Uh, we've disconnected the power and we're going to whip the top off. And one thing I'm just going to um, bring to your attention is that uh, the back's held on with crosshead screws, but the front's held on with hex screws, not even torque screws. Um, first thing we need to do is take off the remote control and that slips up like so. And it pops out and then there's a little uh, release plug there, which we can take that away. And then we've got to lift these off, these pop off the tops of these. Uh, that's the timing for the uh, um, counter rollers. And that one comes off and that top cover comes off. We'll whip the head cover off. And then these pull off and we've got this one to come off as well. So let's find a little screwdriver for that. Um, we're going to do it really gently. We don't want to be forcing this off. Uh, we'll use a knife actually. We'll pop that under there and pop that off. And we don't want to lose that little washer. That'll just slide off. That's in a bit of a state, isn't it? It looks a bit shiny. So we better do something with that. Mind you, that's done thousands of hours of recording. Um, we'll get a close-up look at the heads in a second. Um, these just pop off and there's a little washer that comes up with them. Don't lose that. I think one's just popped off and we'll have to find that one. Oh, there it is. Look, it's just popped in there. Let's rescue that. We don't want to lose that vital little washer that goes under uh, this tape guide. So let's rescue that down there as well. Look at that, that pulley's come completely way off the rewind. So I'm going to push that back on. We're going to reattach the belt. Maybe it's not as fucked up as I thought it was. Well, that's a surprise. Uh, let's take you in for a closer look and we'll have a look and see if our wheels are cracked. So the biggest problem that people are facing with these are fixing the cracked capstan and real motor plastic pulleys. But looking at this one, I mean, it looks absolutely fine to me. Uh, let's see if I can get a little bit more light on it for you. I've got a torch here, we can shine at it. Uh, give you a bit more light, because you can't really see that. What have we got there? Look, that looks absolutely perfect, doesn't it? I think we should put a reel of tape on it and see if it goes. And then this one is always problematic. Uh, this is the capstan uh, pulley, that drives the uh, capstan there, that looks absolutely fine to me, there's no cracking on that, it's, it might just be rubbing the, ah oh, yeah it has come up, it's just come up a little bit, so it is loose on the spindle, we could put a little drop of glue on that, I noticed if you, if you look there there's that space between it was actually up touching the, the metal plate. Um, and if you're looking at mzentertainment.com, you'll see his one. He's actually rubbing it so hard that it's chafing off bits of plastic. But this one isn't, hasn't chafed at all. Um, and then over here, this one, that one, looks absolutely fine as well. Although it may have just, has it risen up a little bit? Yeah, it's just a little bit loose. They're a little bit high, but uh, and it's dusty. Um, but let's put the power back on this. Put a reel of tape on it and uh, run it again. The guides look like they could do with a good clean, don't they? 
but that can all be dealt with. Oh yeah, that's got a proper baked layer of, uh, of muck on it. But again, for today, uh, we're not too worried about that. I just want to make sure this machine mechanically is sound. And judging by what we've seen this morning, uh, with the pulley off and uh, the other ones running a bit high, I think we are going to be doing a bit of Gorilla Glue, but we probably won't need the baking powder, which would be great, uh, because me, baking powder, and a highly expensive and technical machine probably won't end well. So uh, let's get another camera view and we'll put a reel of tape on and see what it does this time. Plug that back in there. And we'll pop that down at the side. And where's our tapes? We have power. Let's go play. That's all looking good. That's looking really good. Let's see if we've got rewind this time. Look at that. Goodness me, this thing is ab This is doing amazing. This is doing much better than I expected. So maybe we're not looking at all the baking powder problems that, uh, that they're looking at at MZ Entertainment. Well, I think the next thing to do then will be to put the cover back on it clean the heads and uh, hook it up to a mixing desk and see how it sounds in terms of wow and flutter. Uh, but that is just a real surprise. I think we still do have to put some super glue um, on the pulleys just to stop them riding up and down as the plastic obviously has brittled out over the years. Oh, how, what a treat it is to see reels of tape turning. What an absolute treat. I don't think there's a sweeter sight. I mean, maybe a hard disk might sound a bit better, but if you know how to drive one of these machines, the results you can get from it are just mind-blowingly cool. Look at that. Oh, this really takes me to a happy place. Let's see if now it's got a little bit of weight on this take-up. Let's see if it's still gonna do a rewind. Look at that. Holy heck, Batman. Um, oh, oh, there she goes. Whoa. Oh, that's picked up nicely. Look at that. An auto stop at the end. Well, well, well. Uh, there we are, the capstan pulley and the, uh, the take-up pulleys. We'll take these off, uh, clean the shaft with a little bit of isopropyl, let that dry out and inside the, the, um, the hole of the pulley, give that a little shot of iso. We might just put a little bit of Gorilla Glue there and there. Uh, this one does ride up so we might just put a little bit of something there but a little blob of Gorilla just in there as well once we've cleaned that. To get to this pulley, uh, you need to go in the back of the machine. Well, this is a complete surprise. I certainly wasn't expecting that kind of result this morning. The Fostex R8. What an absolutely gorgeous machine. So we'll get the cover back on that and uh, we'll hook it up to something. Um, I haven't got an 8-track 8 channel mixer that I can plug all 8 channels in uh, as long as we can get something off a couple of the tracks at least we can hear how steady it's running Right, we're back and you're listening to me uh, through this microphone again which is connected to the mixing desk, and then the Fostex is connected to the mixing desk, and all we've done is connected track two and four down a pair of stereo RCAs. But we're running a little bit slow. So that's track four. And she starts to pick up speed, and in comes the bass on uh, Track two, and you're just hearing them left and right because I've just plugged into a stereo pair on the 
on the mixing desk and of course I can't pan a stereo input on the desk so and it does sound a bit muffled because those heads are absolutely filthy but I tell you I absolutely and so let's just pop that into seven and see what's coming up seven we got any vocals there oh no seven stopped what have we got coming on one and two bit of drums maybe who knows oh we've got some cheesy strings something's on six and seven let's have a quick listen to six a bit more guitar what's coming up seven oh we got a vocal on seven now oh, goodness me those heads need to clean but as I said I'm absolutely gobsmacked that she still appears to be working what a gorgeous machine um, let's locate zero that rewind look at that that's got some that's got some kick to it as well so all in all I'm much happier than I thought I would be and stop at zero. Look at that. What a great machine. So there we are. That's your teaser. Um, I think what we'll probably do is pull this home at Christmas where I've got a bit more space to work. And we'll whip the back off. And uh, we'll, we've got some grease at home and we've got some uh, isopropyl at home. And we can give her a bit of a clean up. And, uh, and we'll see how it sounds after that. But uh, there we are. I hope you enjoyed that. I certainly did. It's been a real treat to lace up a tape recorder again after all these years. So much fun than hitting the enter button on a flipping keyboard, I must say. But there we are. The Fostex R8. As always, thanks for watching. And, uh, we'll see you next time. Wasn't very good. Not butch enough. <laughs>